kidding, I'm not up there. She's right here, she's right here. I'm a full-time wheelchair user, I can't quite make it to the stage, and we just heard Chanel talk about how important it is that you see our voice, and I wanna make sure you know it's even more important that you hear our voice. I will be heard today, even if I can't make it on that stage. Hello, you warrior queens. Resistor sisters and nasty women. And the men who love and support us. We came here last year to, progress, to protest the aggressively regressive agenda that our girther in chief brought with him to Washington. We came to draw the line and warn those looking to take our country backwards that we would not sit quietly and allow the dismantling of the inclusive democracy we've been building for the past 250 years. Last year, I spoke from the stage about intersectionality. Don't drop that banner. Put that banner right back up. Thank you. Last year, I talked about that intersectionality and I dropped some hard truths, overlaying disability on top of those issues that it most impact women, our economy, the education of our children, the strength of our communities, and the impact of sexual assault and domestic violence on our families and our own lives. You heard me with love and work is being done to make changes. And we are working to include the most invisible and the largest minority block in our nation, people with disabilities. So thank you to all of our allies for the miles we've come so far. Look at what we've accomplished together in this past year. We came together in the fight for health care. Who can forget the women with disabilities who risk their own well-being to protect the ACA? Those women with disabilities carried us all this summer and changed the tenor of media coverage and shamed Washington. They literally threw their bodies into the fray, risked their well-being and their dignity to save Obamacare for all of us. Our dreamers also have bravely stepped forward once again, risking everything for justice, reminding us of the value and the contributions that immigrants bring to America, and once again putting a human face on the hateful, divisive rhetoric we're hearing out of Washington. We must do whatever it takes to protect them and create a pathway to citizenship for these people who have given so much to the United States. Their hope. And we have the black women of Alabama to thank for sparing us from Senator Roy Moore. And for the creation of Me Too. I'm here to lay down some hard truth again, guys. It's kind of what I do. I pray you'll hear me with love yet again. The enemy of our movement is our fear of confronting ourselves and our fear of stepping out of our own comfort zones. White women, yes. Yes. we got some work to do. Yes. Our sisters, okay, maybe it's our distant cousins. They're letting us down. It was white women who carried 45 to our White House. It was, it was white women who voted ideology over common sense and decency in Alabama and nearly elected a credibly accused child predator to the Senate. Time and time again, we've learned that our white sisters have sat by silently and meekly while others are harassed or mistreated. And just like all men, whether they seek it or not, benefit from the patriarchy, all white people, whether we seek it or not, benefit from institutional racism. And we're the ones that can dismantle it. We're the ones who can fix it by calling it out. Confronting biases and holding ourselves, our friends, our families, and our neighbors accountable for the hypocrisy and making space for our disenfranchised communities to authentically speak their own truths and their own voice. Amen. Nothing about us without us, people. We must push our own comfort levels. We must risk, just like our disabled sisters, our dreamers, our indigenous sisters, our LGBTQ sisters, and our sisters of color. We must all 
take a risk and step outside of our comfort zones and our daily routines. We have to outwork yes. the hateful, regressive, conservative agenda. Yeah. Yep. Speak out, even when your voice shakes. Yes. Trust yes. your truth, even when it's met with skepticism. Mm and lift up each other and know you are not alone. Your work and your efforts matter and together we will prevail. You see those buildings right over there? That's your house, Arizona. Who are you going to allow to occupy those seats? We have from now until November to decide. We must elect leaders who share our values and who will act to ensure liberty, justice, and equity for all. But it's up to you. We're going to get the government that we work for. So go out here to Canada Row and find your candidate and invest in her. You make time to be here today. Make time to canvas and phone bank. Do it. I know it's uncomfortable. Recruit a friend for five. All right? Take the time. Come out. It is the power of we, the people, all the people that will win. How many of you have managed to treat yourself to a latte or a pedicure or a girls' night in this past year? I know times are tough. Most of us have managed. How about treating yourself to the democracy you deserve? You may not be able to give big to a campaign, but you can give often. $25 a month, that'll buy pizza for a phone bank. Five or $10 a month, that'll buy water for canvassers. And when you get tired and discouraged over these next few months, because it's going to be short, but it's a long grind, too. Remember these words from Maya Angelou. No, I'm surprised you didn't quote it. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. And it's up to you. What are you going to do to ensure we wake up to hope and equity on November 7th? Rise! Rise up! And let's get to work. <laughs>